hello candidates. Uh, hoping you're fine. We are back again for a math lesson brought to you by teacher Ayim Sue Edson. I know you're safe and God is keeping you. So today we are going to look at a new subtopic continuing on what teacher Innocent taught you last time which is identifying repeating and non-repeating decimals. But I would feel we first do the corrections of the previous work so that we move together with the teacher Innocent's work. Uh, number one was, I hope you have the question. Uh, it is with you, so I will just not waste time reading it. But the question says, tap it takes nine minutes to fill the tank. So that means nine minutes are enough for the tank to be full. So we need to know what, what time will it take in one minute. So one minute, this the tank will be one out of nine full. So we have got the time taken for uh, uh, one minute. Now we look at another tap, another another tap, which is tap B. So for tap B, tap B, it takes 12 minutes to fill the same tank. That means in 12 minutes, our tank is full. But we need to know in one minute. So what will be in the tank in one minute? It will be one out of 12 of the tank full of the tank. So we already have for tap A and we have for tap B in one minute. So let us look at both taps in one minute. Both taps in one minute. So both taps they will be putting in the tank. That means we add the fraction of, of tap A in one minute to the fraction of tap B in one minute, which will become one out of nine plus one out of 12. And here I know you know how to add fractions. We look for the LCM. What's the LCM of nine and 12? It will give us 36. So we look at one out of nine of 36, then plus one out of 12 of 36. So we shall see in nine, in 36 we have four nines, and in 36 we have three twelves. So this one would give us uh, one times four, which is four, plus one times three, which is three, out of 36. So if I get, so we see from our simplified fraction, it will give us seven out of 36 as the time taken by both tabs in one minute. But we need to look at the total time taken by both tabs. So total time taken. So this one will give us the quantities we are filling, the number of tanks we are filling, we divide it by the time taken in one minute by both tabs. But in our question, we have one tank that we are filling. So this one represents the number of tanks we are filling. Then we divide it by the total time by both tabs in one minute. So this one will give us, we know how to simplify our fraction, it will be one times 36 out of seven, which gives us 36 out of seven. Uh, when we divide this, we shall get five minutes and one out of seven minutes. So this is the total time taken by both taps to make sure our tank is filled. The second question was, tap it takes six minutes to feed the tank. So tap E, it fills the tank in six minutes. Therefore, six minutes are enough for this tank 
for this stuff to feed, to feed the tank. But what about in one minute? So we shall get the time taken by tap E in one minute. And this, it will have put one out of six of the tank. Where one is feeding the tank, then another one is drawing water out of the tank. So for tap E, it will take six minutes to fill the tank. In one minute, it will have put one out of six of the tank. But let us look at tap F. So tap, tap F takes eight minutes to draw all the water from the tank. So that means eight minutes will be enough for this one tank uh, to be empty, one tank empty. So here we are making it empty, we are drawing water from it. But how much water we need to draw out in one minute? It will be one out of eight of the tank. That means in one out of, in one minute, one out of eight of, of the tank will be drawn. Now we look at both taps. So both both taps in one minute. What will happen? Remember, one is putting, another one is removing. So what do we do? We shall get this one out of six, which is already in the tank. Then we remove one out of eight, because this one is removing from the, the tank. So this one will simplify our fraction, which will give us everything of six and eight. I know you are with me, that is 24. So we look at one out of six of 24. One out of six of 24 minus 1 out of 8 of 24. So you will see that in our 24, we have 3 eighths. And in our 24, we have 4 sixes. So this one will give us 1 times 4, which is 4, minus 1 times 3, which is 3, out of 24. Now, when we simplify 4 minus 3 out of 24, we are going to get 1 out of 24. But the question is saying, how long will it take to feed the tank? Though one tank is removing, but we want this tank full. So what do we do? We look at time taken. Time taken will be one tank which we are having. Now divide by the total time taken by both taps. How much water will both taps put the one is removing? So it will be this, the time taken out of 24. So when we simplify it is 1 times 24. This one will give us 24 minutes as our total time that will be taken to have this tank full. So you answer the question that way. So number three tells us tap M takes 9 minutes to feed the tank and tap N takes 12 minutes but tap Q takes only 6 minutes to empty the tank. So here we have 3 taps. So from our previous corrections I can now tell you that this is tap, 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 tap. The first tap is M. It will take 1 out of 9 of the tank. Then another tap is tap N. This one in one minute will have one out of 12. Then tap, uh, tap Q. Tap Q will also take one out of six. Now, I've, you have seen how the, the, the fractions were coming about in activity one and activity two. So I've just gone to fraction form. But now, the two taps, these one are putting in the tank, while this one is removing. So what do we do? We look at this, they are putting in the tank, we add them, then we remove what this one takes out. So it will be tap M plus, Y plus, it is putting in the tank. Tap N, then minus what this tap will remove from the tank. Tap Q. 
This one will be in one minute. So all taps in one minute, all taps will be one out of nine plus one out of 12 minus one out of six. So we look for the LCM of nine, 12, and six, which is 36. So we look at one out of nine times 36 of 36 plus one out of 12 of 36, then minus one out of six of 36. I know you with me. How many nines are in 36? There will be four. How many twelves are in 36? There will be three. How many sixes are in 36? There will be six. So when we simplify, one times four is four, plus one times three is three, then what we shall get, we shall subtract. One times six is six, but everything out of our LCM. So when we simplify what we get, four plus three, this one will give us seven, then minus six out of 36. So this is one out of 36. What does this one mean? That the two taps which are putting in the tank and one tank tap which is removing from the tank, all together will have this water in the tank. So now we want to look at the total time taken for the tank before. So total time, so total time taken will be the quantities of the tanks we have, and our question is telling us one tank. So it will be one divided by the amount of water that will be in the tank in one minute, which is one out of 36. This one will give us one times 36 out of one, which I believe you know this gives us what? 36. But we are dealing with minutes. So this is the total time. Answer the question that the uh, all taps will take 36 minutes to fill the tank. And um, we are going to now activity number four. Nakawes can dig a garden in eight days and Numo can dig the same garden in ten days. So let us look at Nakawes alone. So we are going to look at Nakawes. In one day, Nakawes will take one out of eight of the garden. It means that in one day, Nakawes will have dug one out of eight of the garden. Now, but there are two people digging the same garden. There is also the demo who can dig the same garden in 10 days. It's a bit slower. So the demo here, the demo in one day will dig one out of 10 of the same garden. Now let's compare the two Nakawes and the Dimo in one day. In one day. So both, if we compare them both, in one day they will have that one out of eight and one out of ten when added together. So here the LCM becomes, our LCM will be, uh, what's the LCM of eight and ten? It will be forty. So we look at one out of eight of forty plus one out of ten of forty. So that means how many eights are in forty? There are five. How many tens are in forty? They are four. So meaning that this is one times five, which is five, plus one times four, which is four out of forty. This one gives us 9 out of 40. Now it means that in one day, both will have dug 9 out of 40. And what is our question? The question is saying, what fraction of the garden can they dig in one day if both work together? So we already have the, the fraction for both in one day. And we end here. The question is not asking us the time taken to finish the garden if both work Together. Okay, now let's look at our new subtopic of today. Still on the same topic of fraction taught by teacher Innocent. Identify, identify repeating and non-repeating decimals. Now we have to look at the new words here. We have the word repeating, 
which can also be recurring, and we have also the word decimals. Now, repeating this means numbers that have digits that repeat several times. The decimal numbers are numbers that have decimal places. So we we'll have to know which fraction is repeating and which fraction is not repeating. Uh, example one, express five out of eight as a decimal. So five out of eight is what we're expressing as a decimal. Remember, we want to see whether it is repeating or non-repeating. So our eight comes here, our five. Now we're going to move in multiples of eight as you see on the screen. Now, how many eights are in five? So here we are grouping in eights. How many eights are in five? You will see that we don't have any eight in five. So that one gives us zero. Now, zero times eight, this one will give us zero. So when we subtract, we get our five. We already had our five before and it is appearing again. So what does this one call us do? We put a decimal point and add a zero. Now we have gone to the tens. We have started grouping now in tens, the number of tens we shall have. So we look at 50 divided by eight. According to our table, you will see that 50 is between, is between 48. Is between 48 and 56. So, which means we shall take our six. So it means that there are six eights in 50. Now what is six times eight? This one will give us 48. So when we take our difference, it will give us, this is two. This is our zero. Now, since we already have our decimal point, we continue adding zeros up to when the number is finished or when we see it cannot get finished. So now we have 20. How many eights are in 20? Refer back to our table. So you see 20 lies between 16 and 24. So we shall take the two eights which we can get from 16. Now it should be two. Now two times eight here, two times eight will give us 16. So when we take a difference of 20 and 16, we shall have our four. This is 10, we have regrouped from here, we brought it became 10, so this is four. We already have our decimal point, we are allowed to add a zero. So we have 40. Do we have any, any eight in 40? We refer to our table, it is showing us five. Eight times five gives us 40. Therefore, when I come and I write my five here, five times eight, gives me 40. Now when I take a difference, I will see that my number is finished. Remember our topic says identifying repeating and non-repeating. So according to these digits, we don't have any digit repeating and our number is finished. Therefore, this is not a repeating decimal. So we shall say five out of eight is equal to 0 0.625. This is not a repeating decimal because we don't have digits repeating. Uh, example two, express two out of nine as a decimal. So two out of nine is what we're expressing as a decimal and we identify it to see is it a repeating or a non-repeating. Remember the question, we are identifying. We are not working out into decimals, we are just identifying which fraction is a decimal. So when I put my 9, I bring my 2 here. So we are now dividing this number by 9. So we look at our table, as you see on the screen. Now, how many 9s are in 2? When we are grouping 9s out of 2, can we get any 9 out of 2? Of course not. So we shall have our 0. Now, 0 this times 9 gives us a 0, we subtract. So when we subtract, we see we already have our 2. So this tells us we want a decimal number. We create a decimal point, 
And this decimal point adds us to regrouping tens. We have started now regrouping in tens, one out of ten. So we get 20. So 20 divided by 9, when we look at our table, 20 lies uh, between 18 and 27. So we shall take a 2. There are two nines in 20. Now, what is 2 times 9? 2 times 9 will give us 18. Now, 20, when we take away 18, class, I know you know the answer. What is it? So here, the group I bring is 1. I bring it becomes 10. Now, 10 take away 8 comes 2. Now, we already have our decimal point, so we allow to add many zeros as we want, but we add one at a time. So this one becomes 20. We have already seen our 20 here. I know you clever as our students, I know you. You have already seen that there is again two nines in 20. So two times nine will give me 18. So what about when I subtract? So regroup, your main is one, this one becomes 10. 10 take away eight, it becomes two. We already have our decimal point. We can add a zero. So I see you are starting to identify this 20 is appearing now and again. But let's see, maybe it will give us a different answer. 20 divided by nine, what will it give us? It will give us two again. So two times nine still gives us 18. Now, subtract, you will see that when we regroup, this one remains one, becomes two. So, to a clever child, we will see that this thing will not end. And the two is repeating. So what do we do? We can side stop here, but we tell the examiner that we know very many other digits are left out. We use those three dots to mean and so on, etc. They must be three digits to come out with our English words. So we have stopped there. Now, our topic says identify repeating. Is this repeating or non-repeating? I feel you have said a repeating decimal. So therefore, two out of nine is equal to 0 0.2 bar. That is one way we can write it. Or, or two out of nine is the same as 0 0.2 a full stop word dot is another way of how we express that or 2 out of 9 is equal to 0 0.222 and so on we haven't answered the question yet so we say 2 out of 9 is a repeating decimal so I hope you are getting used to the activity now but let's look at example 3 and I know you will do it before me. So it says express 8 out of 11 as a decimal. 8 out of 11 as a decimal. So our 11 is what we bring here, and this is 8. Our 11, this is now 8. So still, I'm not going to construct a table here as you look at it on the screen. We are now going to look at how many 11s are in 8. If you are grouping in 11, how many will you get from 8? Automatically, you will get 0. So this is 0. Now 0 times 11, it will give you 0. So when you subtract, you get 8. We had our 8 already, so we all again got our 8. So this one tells us we go to decimals, we are grouping in tens, 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 and so on. So in tens, not tens, sorry. So we put a decimal point and add a zero. So we are going to look how many 11s can we get out of the 80 when we are grouping. In our table, you will see 80 lies between uh, 77 and 88. So we shall take seven. Now, that means 80 divided by 11, we get 7. Let's check. 7 times 11 gives us 77. So we subtract. In our normal subtraction, we regroup from 8. They remain 7. Then when we bring a 10 here, it becomes a 10. Now 10 take our 7. I hope you know it is 3. Since we have our decimal point, we are allowed to put a, a 0. The number becomes 30. 
come to our table and see 30 lies square. The 30 lies between 22 and 33. So that means 30 divided by 11, we shall get two 11s there, uh, which is 2 times 11 gives us 22. And when you subtract what you get, a first learner will have already given you 8. But let's see, after grouping, there will be 2. This is 10. 10 take away 2. That is 8. Now, we add as a 0 again. So, in our 80, we have already got our 80 here. So, I think you can connect easily. And see, we shall get the 7. Now, the 7 will give us 7 times 11. will give us 77. We had already subtracted 80 minus 77. And it gave us 3. So when I put a 3, since I already have my decimal point, I can again add 0. It will give me 30. And the 30 area had given us 2. So I can put my 2 there. 2 times 11, it is already with us, which gives us uh, 22. Uh, when you take the difference of 30 and 22, my dear candidates, you will see that it is the 8. Now, what do you see here? That the same thing is repeating. We can think of stopping here. Because what we are getting, we have already got it here. So, you tell the examiner that the number has not ended, but you have decided to stop there. There are many other digits that are coming. So, that's why we have stopped there. Now, the question is, is this, we are identifying repeating and non-repeating. Is it a repeating or a non-repeating decimal? I guess your answer is that 8 out of 11 is a repeating decimal. So 8 out of 11 is 0 0.72. So when I put dots, I will only use that. And you say 8 out of 11 is a repeating decimal. Uh, dear candidates, let's go and look at example 4. There are many, but I want to see the difference in each Example. So, example four says express one out of six as a decimal. Now we shall look at one out of six. Now this one is when we look at our long division. Uh, our six comes, then our one. Now we are dividing in six. So I'm not going to put my table here. As you look on the screen of six. So. Now, 1 divided by 6, if we are grouping in 6s, how many 6s can we get from 1? Of course, the answer is no any 6 in 1. So we write a 0. Now, this is 0 times 6. I know you know what to get. This is 0. Now, when we take a difference, we shall get our 1. We had our 1 earlier, and our 1 is surfacing again. So what should we do? We put a decimal point, then we add a 0. So we look at 10 in 6. When you look at 10 in 6, it lies between 6 and 12. Therefore, we can get 1, 6 in the 10. So I will write that one group of 6 we can get out of this 10. This is 1 times 6, which gives us 6. Now, when you take a difference of 10 and 6, you will see, count on from your head, 6, then 7, 8, 9, 10, you will get a 4. At a zero, how many sixes can we get from 40? From our table there, we see that 40 lies between 36 and 42. So it will give us a six. It will give us a six. So when we give, take a six, now six times six, it will give us six times six, gives us 36. Now when we subtract 40, uh, when we subtract 36 from 40 uh, by regrouping, this one will make 3 and this one becomes 10 because we have borrowed a 10 from a 40, so it becomes 10. 10 take away 6, it becomes 4. Now we add a 0, it becomes 40 as we add here, so it will give us again 6. 6 times 6, what is the answer? For us, I know you would mean, it will give me. 36 again. So when you subtract 36 from 40, you will see that the answer is now again 4. 
If you feel you're not satisfied with the number, you can add a zero again. So it gives us 40 again. Now 40 divided by 6, it gives us again 6. 6 times 6, you tell me that the answer is 36. So a learner here, I expect you to have decided, teacher, let's stop there. Because this number seems it will not end. Now when we take a difference, of course, it will give us a 4. Now me, I decide to stop here because I'm identifying that 6. Now what is unique with this number is that 1 is not repeating, but 6 is repeating. Therefore, the fraction is a repeating decimal. Now we shall have that 1 out of 6 equals 0 0.16. If you are using a dot, you put a dot on 6, not on 1. Why? 1 is not repeating. If you are using 1 out of 6 equals 0 0.16, you are using a bar, you put a bar on 6. Why 6? Because it is only one repeating and one is not repeating. If you are using dots, then you are saying 1 out of 6 equals 1.6 sorry this is 0 0.1666 bring us the you are here and show the three dots to mean that this 6 is the one which will continue one is not repeating and the answer is 1 out of 6 is a repeating decimal and now as we see here these are three ways of repeating this fraction but don't write all of them i wrote the three forms because i know each one of you decided to take or to choose which way to use so if you're using any of these take one now remember the question says which fraction is a repeating therefore our answer is one out of six as in the previous examples I expect you are answering this one out of six is a repeating decimal. So I hope we are all together. Therefore, I need to check if you have understood and I will give you the activity uh, which is now with us on the screen. Try to identify the fraction that are repeating or which are not repeating. Thank you so much for listening to me. We meet again in the next lesson.